Though I love movies and the film industry, I wasn't sure if I was going to weigh in on this topic because I'm definitely not an expert in any of this. But then I remembered this is the internet. You don't need to be an expert. You just have to own a camera and like talking. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Small Entertainment. And as I'm filming this, this is a developing story. And I'm sure once this goes out on Tuesday, there is probably going to be some new information out there. So there's a very real chance that by the time I publish this, the bulk part of this video could be technically outdated. I do still want to give my opinion, but by the time this comes out or between the time of me editing this, there may be some new developments, which I will try to include if they happen while I'm editing. But if they do come out after the fact, I will just make a pinned comment. Over the last couple of days, there's been a story unfolding of a feud isn't the right word, let's say standoff between Universal Studios and movie theater companies like AMC and now Regal. Personally, I think it's really funny that all of this stems from Trolls World Tour. Easily, all of this could change the course of the film industry, and it's all due to Trolls World Tour. Let me set the scene for you. I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's this pandemic going on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of affected like every aspect of life and uh, our day-to-days of our former normal. One of the industries that has been affected and was affected, I would say pretty early on, was the movie industry, particularly movies that were being released in the theaters. People were concerned about getting infected at movie theaters, so a bunch of movie theaters started implementing changes, like AMC implemented 50% max capacity for theaters. Obviously, in mid-March, I'm assuming you were there. Stay-at-home orders went into place, non-essential businesses were asked to close, and movie theaters were pretty much one of them if they hadn't already shut down for the safety of their employees and the general public prior to that. Obviously, there were a bunch of films that were set to be released in theaters in this time, and one of those films was Trolls World Tour, the sequel to Trolls from Universal. And there's a lot of other films that were supposed to come out in this time, but specifically Trolls World Tour is the one that's calling all this hullabaloo, and so that's the one we're talking about. Early on, even before the shutdowns and the stay-at-home orders were put into place, public concern over getting sick was rising, and so people stopped going to the movie theaters, and major studios were concerned about opening weekend numbers and even just long-term theatrical release numbers. So a lot of studios decided to just move their release dates to November because no one knew how long this was going to go on. And a lot of these films that were moved to November have since been moved to 2021, and I'm assuming we're going to see more of that. As Trolls World Tour was already going to be coming out April 10th, and they probably had already spent a majority of their marketing budget, if not more. Universal decided that rather than push the release date for Trolls World Tour, they were going to release it on video on demand for $19.99 for a 48-hour rental. No one expected it to bring in over $100 million in the first three weeks of it being available. Now, obviously, there's a lot of factors of why that number was that high. Specifically, there's a lot of families with children stuck at home that were probably already excited to see Trolls World Tour, and now they have the ability to see it in the safety of their own homes. When a film is released on demand, the studio takes about an 80% cut of the revenue generated by that video being released onto demand. However, in theaters, I believe the cut is about 50%. Revenue brought in by Trolls World Tour is completely unprecedented for what is normal for a video on demand release. And again, that can be chalked up to a lot of different things. However, this made Universal consider, okay, this could work. Universal announced that when things are allowed to be reopened and theaters are allowed to be reopened, that rather than just release in theaters, they will also be releasing on video on demand at the same time for future releases. This pissed some people off. Movie theaters, mainly. I can't seem to find anyone else that's mad about this. Typically, there's an agreement that a film will not be released on demand until 90 days after it has started its theatrical release. AMC came out and said that they will not be showing any films from Universal that go against the 90-day window, and that they will be doing the same for any studios that choose to go the same route as Universal in the future. Cineworld Entertainment, or Regal, has also come forward and said that they agree with AMC and that they also will not be showing Universal films that go against the 90-day window once theaters are allowed to reopen. Listen, I get what you're trying to do, but I don't think it's smart. Basically, this is a game of chicken and the oncoming train is the movies that will come out after everyone is allowed to go outside again. Personally, I don't think there's a quote unquote right side in this debate. They're both giant companies whose main goal is to make money. But in the coverage of this, and again, this is unfolding, so I could be wrong by the time this goes out. But in the coverage of this, what I haven't seen is people talking about the new reality that's going to be the film industry after this and how that is going to affect this overall debacle. I know I mentioned this already, but I don't know if you guys remember, we're in a pandemic, every level of the film industry will be changing after this. 
I don't think the film industry is going away. As I said in my previous video, two things always survive when things get bad, organized crime and entertainment. Film is going to be fine. But how the film industry runs and how films are shot and how films are released is absolutely going to change. I don't know about you, and you can absolutely disagree with me, but I personally don't think there's a back to normal after this. I think there's a forward. I think we as a a uh, country and as a planet can absolutely move forward from this. I don't think we're gonna return to life as normal. And not just the film industry, but specifically the movie theater experience is absolutely going to change after this. There's been a couple of plans announced of how we're going to reopen the country and everything's going to come in phases as they've been saying, but I'm fairly certain movie theaters are not gonna be in phase one. And even when things do open up, there's gonna be a bunch of safety measures in place. And one of those safety measures is probably gonna be the same safety measure that was implemented by AMC and other theaters before the shutdowns happen, where there's gonna be a maximum occupancy in theaters of 50%. Movie theater element of the film industry is going to change after this. And honestly, I can't see how it changed without a strong move towards video on demand. Let me put it this way. I love the movies. I personally think it is still the best way to see a movie for the first time. I like sitting in my chair. I like having the giant screen. I like sneaking in a giant pretzel. I like getting my popcorn. I like my big soda that I could feasibly spin a small child into. And I enjoy the overall experience of going and seeing a movie like that. However, when things open up again, I don't know if I'm going to feel safe enough, regardless of what safety measures are put in place, to go to the movies right away. And there are a lot of people who probably feel the same way as me, where even though things are going to be open, they're still going to be concerned about getting sick. So let's say you kind of want to go to a movie, but you really want to go to a movie that you really, really, really want to see, or that's going to be a big deal. Are you going to pick maybe an indie art house film, or are you going to pick a blockbuster? Now, personally, I think the blockbuster films are, we're going to be moving away from those in the future, but that's a probably a different video that's gonna be more sad, so we're not gonna talk about that. Moving forward with our new reality, you're gonna have more people and families making the decision that many people made way before this, which is, I'm going to spend my money on a movie ticket and now I have to risk getting sick. Many people before this already decided, hey, I don't wanna spend money on a movie ticket. They were expensive before this started. They're probably not gonna change their prices after this started. In my last film review on Birds of Prey, I also talked about why I believed it failed at the box office. And one of the major reasons that people gave me were that movie ticket prices were already way too high in their area and they didn't wanna spend the money on a ticket at all. So now we're going into a new time frame where people are going to have a lot less disposable income. So already you have people who are, one, not willing to spend the money on it, but now you have to factor in the possibility that people are gonna be scared about getting sick. Already there's a possibility that you're going to see a drop in ticket prices because people don't have a disposable income of going to a movie theater or you're going to see a drop in concession prices because people do deserve entertainment and probably will still go see movies but they're going to stop spending money at the concession stand. So already you're seeing a cut in revenue there but now you're also going to have people that are still worried about getting sick. If they are going to the movie they're going to go to one movie and that's going to be the movie they're going to go to for the foreseeable future. Are they more likely to go see an indie movie or are they more likely to see a blockbuster? I don't want anyone in the comment section. I hate blockbuster movies. I only like our house movies. Okay, good for you. It's not what we're talking about. The film industry as a whole is going to take a hit in many different ways, but a large portion that is going to suffer, I think, is going to be independent studios and their film releases. Because let's say a theater has 28 screens, and now they only are allowed to fill each of those theaters with those screens at 50% capacity, okay? So already they're selling less tickets than they are used to selling. However, if they're trying to fill up the theaters that they have available because they're trying to make a profit in any way that they can in this time, the theater probably already knows that they are more likely already to sell more tickets for something like, say, Black Widow than they are for the next A24 release, St. Maud. Now, this is just an example of two movies. To my knowledge, at this time, Black Widow is still set to release to its new release date in November. But also, Disney already has Disney+, Plus, so they are poised to move to on-demand streaming if they need to. However, I don't think Disney will move this route, especially with Black Widow because they probably want to avoid any possible backlash they could get from dropping the arguably longest anticipated female-led Marvel movie onto their streaming platform and not giving it a theatrical release. They are going to want to devote more screens to movies that they think will draw the larger ticket sales. I think we're going to see a lot more indie films getting a lot less out of theatrical releases if they get theatrical releases at all because they're not being given theater time. Fuck, I hope I'm making sense. Editing man is gonna have fun. And we've seen this before, namely with Avengers Endgame. I'm sure there's others, but that's the more recent one that I can think of where theaters knew that Avengers Endgame was selling tickets. And so they just started canceling other screenings of movies to free up that theater 
for Endgame. I know I kind of hopped around a bit and probably made this really confusing and you're like, wait, what does this have to do with AMC and Universal? My point is, is that people are more likely to leave their houses and risk getting sick and even spend money on a big blockbuster movie. Universal is set to release several highly anticipated movies, many of which are franchise installments, which is always box office bait. And for AMC and Regal to just decide that, hey, we're not gonna show them because they're gonna also potentially release on demand, I think is stupid because after this, when we are allowed to re-enter into the world, things are not gonna be back to normal. And we're probably already gonna see a dip in people going to the theaters at all. When people do go to the theaters, they're probably more likely to wanna go see a blockbuster movie or take their kids to go see a blockbuster movie or take their friends to go see a blockbuster movie, whatever, you get my point. Basically, they're stopping whatever possible tiny bag they were going to get at all by not playing these movies from Universal, is my point. Someone's gonna comment like, okay, but like, this is normal. They don't do this for movies. They never show films that are already released on demand. They don't do that. I understand, but the world is changing. And even the Academy made an announcement saying that they will accept films that are released on demand in the time frame to be eligible for best picture categories without a theatrical run. The rules are changing. Like I don't have kids and I'm not gonna pretend that I know what it's like to be a parent, but I also know that if I had spawned something, I would be very concerned about bringing my child out into the world right now, okay? I would be 100% concerned with taking my kid if there is a possibility that they could end up with a severe respiratory disease that could kill them. I would not risk a kid in this, and I sure as shit would not be taking them to a movie theater to go see Trolls World Tour. There are so many people who will make that choice, who will decide, okay, for my own health and the health of my family, we're not gonna go to the movies, we're gonna get it on demand. I think we're either gonna see more studios going the universal route and trying to do things simultaneously, or even the possibility that the 90 day window is going to change to a 30 day window, if that. I don't think the movie theater industry is going away because again, I'm sure a lot of people agree with me that that is the superior way to go see movies for the first time, but there are also plenty of people who don't care, okay? And they already don't, make a big deal about going to the movies unless it's like a huge blockbuster because I want to see the Avengers punch each other in the face on a big screen. Before someone gets mad at me for that last line, um, that was a jab at me, not you. Calm down. There are already people who don't care if they see a movie in theaters and that number is going to go up if there's a risk of getting sick or again, there's a risk that they don't have that much disposable income to go and see a movie the way that they used to. Like I said, this is a game of chicken and personally, I think that uh, AMC and Regal are gonna cave first because again, who knows how long this is gonna go on for. I think AMC is already speculated to potentially be on the brink of bankruptcy. You know, they're gonna need any ticket sales they can get, honestly, so they're gonna want to be able to show No Time to Die. They're gonna wanna be able to show Fast and Furious 9 or 26. Which one are we on? Chances of them holding out on showing Universal Tatters not super good. Personally, I don't really think they'll do it. I would like to take a moment to remind you that small independent theaters, art house theaters, do still exist. And they are definitely gonna need support after this because I know at least a lot of my local ones are mainly run on donations and by volunteers and a lot of them are still gonna need support after this. Maybe we'll see more of them getting more attention because already a lot of them have smaller capacities. I don't think this is like, oh, we're gonna boycott AMC and Regal. I'm, that's not what I'm saying at all because that's stupid and that would make no sense. I think they're shooting themselves in the foot. I think they're stupid for doing this. My earlier point about, you know, smaller independent films not getting the theater time they deserve is going to be a reality and hopefully more films will be released in art house cinemas and more of them will be able to at least get something. Hopefully that'll be enough to keep those open and running and probably a few bigger films will be thrown in there as well. But support your local independent theaters. Um, I know the Frida is one in Santa Ana that I like a lot. Feel free to drop down below uh, local independent theaters to you guys. Don't like link the website for the theaters, but just put like the name and then like the city they're in. Do I think as a whole that the movie theater experience is going to be completely done after this? No, I think theaters will survive in the long run, but things are going to be different for at least the foreseeable future. And for AMC and Regal to react to Universal's move this way, I think is so stupid because Universal, at the end of the day, they have all these films they've made. A lot of these are big budget films and they hopefully want to turn something resembling a profit. And I think the way to do that in this post pandemic world we are entering into is going to be film releases and early video on demand releases. I think we're moving towards a new normal of shortening that 90 day window 
or just getting rid of it entirely. That's where I'm gonna end this, but what are some movies that are supposed to be coming out either by the end of this year or in 2021 that you are looking forward to? Are you looking forward to going back to the movies? Do you think there's a right side in this debate? Do you think everyone is a capitalist moron and I'm just a consumer because I go to the movies at all? Let me know, comment down below. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to support my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day, wash your hands, goodbye. money down on who they think is gonna cave first because I, I truly think that the theaters are gonna cave first especially because like a movie bringing in a hundred million on VOD is very different than a movie bringing in a hundred million at the box office. Thank you Adam, Allen, Elise, Alex, Bradley, Brighton, Young, Cameron, Cameron D, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Dean, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Evan, Feckless, George, Jaren, Jason, John, M, John, Jonathan, Kenneth, Kim, Matt, Meme Lord, The Red, Michael, J, Michael, Lisa, Luis, Manga, Matthew, Nathaniel, Prylock, Robert, Stefan, Torben, Tom, Victor, William, Zendry.